Hey, 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 what up, y'all? This is your boy, Ken. I, you're watching The View from the Game. Thank you for tuning in. If you're on Instagram, you watch me live. I am the actual man behind the Instagram. Yes, I do answer my DMs. When you DM, you DM in me. Hey, but check this out, man. Well, I got your attention, make sure you go get my book, The 48 Laws of Game. That's right, The 48 Laws of Game. You can get it at audible.com. All you got to do is type my name, Pippin Ken. When you get to audible.com, and this book, as well as my other book, The Art of Human Chess, this is the book everybody's talking about. This is the book that your daddy should have taught you about. Everything that your daddy didn't teach you to gain, it's in this book right here. In The Art of Human Chess, the study guide to win, teach you how to maneuver, teach you how to finesse, teach you how to play chess, teach you how to outsmart your enemy. You got to get my books, classics. Hey, man, also, man, make sure you subscribe, like, and make sure you let everybody know through notifications where to come and get this joint at by sharing. And also, I am also the proprietor and the owner of HHF Mag, HHF Clothing, HHF uh, Awards, and HHF Radio. Hey, man, stay tuned, man, and go to thehiphopfraternity.com and check us out. And every Monday, we're at the Ice Bar. That's right, 5456 Fairville Road, Atlanta, Georgia. Every artist get in free. Every A&R get in free. Every executive get in free. Everybody is free. Artists get to perform for free, and you get to park for free. The only free game in town. Uh, you heard of Karl Marx? And I fast. You no. heard of Karl Marx? Karl Marx. Karl That's Marx. He was a, he was a, uh, a communist uh, back in the early 50s and 40s. He said that religions is the opium of the people. What do you say of that? And what he meant by that was that people are so high on religion. Mm -hmm. and they so indulged in religion and so engrossed in it that a lot of times it's hard for people to have an intelligent conversation. As you said, you know, earlier, yeah. you know, in the conversation, never let your emotions supersede you. Never let yeah. your intelligence or your emotions supersede your intelligence. And that you got to be, you know, I always say, in, in reference to what I'm about to say, you got three levels of, of, of emotions and, and, and intelligence. You got IQ, intelligent quotient. You got EQ, emotional quotient. You got AQ, adaptability quotient, you know. And, and what he was saying is, you know, a person have a high intellect and in religion, but can be emotionally engrossed. You see what I'm saying? Right. And because of that emotional engrossment, it's hard for that person to adapt and to be able to relate to the Muslims, to the to the uh, right. Rastafarians, to the Nation of Islam, and it clogs their thinking. Yeah, yeah. So I, that's I what agree. he meant by that. Yeah, I agree. That's where a lot of people fall. With, with a lot, of, like, like when it comes down to me, I just want to be a knowledgeable person on so many different. Station. So, so whether I know about Islam, Christianity, I don't get, I care if it's Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses. I want, I want to know about the Satanist people and why they believe what they believe. I just want to know why people believe what they believe and why they think like they think, especially like the monks. And I, and I actually love how, how the monks, the Buddhas and stuff like that, because they, they teach the art of detachment, you know, being detached from all this materialistic stuff. Like I like to shine. I like to look good. But my head is not in the clouds to where I feel like I'm, my, all my value is into this. I always say, you know, somebody going if, if a woman's gonna be with me, please respect me because of the jewels in my brain and not the jewels on my chain. I always say that stuff. So that's easy said, but oh, <laughs> you got the biggest chain I'd ever say. Right. So right. So so so, uh, what is the mentality? of a boss that gets jury on that level. I mean, it, at the time you was getting that, that made, what was your mentality? So watch this. I'm glad that you asked me. You asked, you asked some pretty good questions because it's going to allow the people to get to know who I, who I am and not just on the surface because I know I look very stereotypical, right? Mm -hmm. But the reason why I do everything that I do, and I don't want to give out too much game because I don't like people seeing my hand too much. Mm -hmm. We live in a fallen world to where our people, and especially in this generation, in this era, if you're not shining, they're not looking at you. And my people, they're looking up to the rappers, they're looking up to all this other stuff that they're praising. So what I do is, I mean, I put on the costume for you. Like, okay, that's cool, I put on all this, let me get your attention. But it's kind of like putting a worm on a hook. Let me bait you in, let me feed you the message, because I'm not here to show you that my, I'm living my life better than you. I'm here to be a service to the people. 
that's really my job on earth is to be a service to the people. People be calling themselves kings. But when I call myself the king, I call my, uh, to me, true king, a true king is going to be a servant. Just like, you know, not to sound religious because I'm not religious, but, you know, Jesus was the king, the king, the Lord, the Lord. So I always say he was, a, he, he gave service and people don't understand that they always want to be served, you know, especially coming from our lifestyle, you know, but even in that, we got to know how to serve, serve our knowledge, provide them and guide them. And a lot of it genetics too. You know what I mean? We were kings yeah. and queens in Africa, and I don't know if you ever heard of Mansa Musa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, so he, of course. He was so rich, he had so much gold that his gold would uh, mess up the GDP of certain economies. He had just dumped yeah. gold into different economies, and it, it would disrupt the economy. Right, right, you right. Know? So we, you know, are the first people who actually wear jewelry. You mm -hmm. know. A lot of people don't understand, you know, we talk about our Jewish brothers, you know, being, you know, the uh, curators and the makers and the designers of a lot of jewelry. No, you go back to Nefertiti, you go back to King, yeah. King uh, Tuck and all that, you know, nothing but jewelry at its, yeah. at its apex, right? So we know that a lot of that is genetics, you know, a lot of things that we do, mm. we do it subconsciously through our ancestors. Mm, that's a different angle. I didn't even. I wasn't even thinking on that angle yet. Yeah, okay. that's true, man. You know, what I mean, it's that's why we love jewelry so much. It's genetic. That's just like I always tell people. You know, the the most potent and the most dangerous person on the planet is a young African American man. And they say, why? I said, not only, you know, are we the father of mathematician, we the father of astronomy and astrology. Right. And people say, how? How is that? I said. Go anywhere on the planet in, in, in its inception, throw a group of people on uh, that land and ask them to do astrology. You're not going to have all of the animals that's in astrology only right. in Africa. Right. Ain't no lions in certain parts of, of yeah. the world, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. If they was imported. So you got every zodiac in the zodiac symbolism is in Africa. Mm. Everything. So, mm. you know what I'm saying? I mean, that's one of the things. And then another thing that people don't realize is that the black man is so attacked and so abused and it's, it's so much systemic racism mm. being imposed upon him because of his penis. The mm. black man is the only man on the planet mm. that can wipe out an entire generation of people through genetics, through his penis. Whenever mm. you amalgamate or, 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 or ejaculate into a white woman, that baby going to come out dark. Mendo in biology said you get the darker genes, you get the recessive out of the darker genes, but you can't get the darker genes out of the recessive. Right. He said the darker genes are dominant. You know, so we are a very special people. You know, this melanin. Yes, indeed. This great motor skills and intellectual skills, which is forming in the early fetus. And we have approximately 11 pigments. The only thing that have more pigments than us is the chimpanzee, it has 12 pigments. Europeans only have five pigments. So, you know, that's why it's so much uh, mm -hmm. degradation and so much debauchery and wickedness and licentiousness imposed on our people because mm -hmm. we are the only real weapon of mass destruction. Your mm -hmm. penis yes, is indeed. in the symbolism of of, of, of bullets, mm -hmm. guns, monument, the Washington White Monument is made in the symbolism of the black man penis to remind certain people that if you allow black men to run rampant, if you allow them to amalgamate and to copulate with other races, they will wipe you out. Mm, that's deep. Yeah, I gotta, I, gotta, I gotta read upon it, I gotta look into no, it. No, this is facts. Yeah, Mendo of biology. You know what I'm saying? But he tell you that you can get the recessive out the dominant, but you can't get the dominant out the recessive. He said that darker genes are dominant and, and lighter genes are recessive, are weak. Mm. Have, have, have sex with a white woman, which you think that baby gonna come out? Come out. A black man. In history, it was an old uh, folklore in the European community. It says that if you got one drop of black blood in you, a nigga, Yep, you're black. Yeah, so you know that 
kind of explain your jewelry, brother, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's just a lot of things is genetic. You know what I'm saying? We just naturally kings, you know? Yeah. And if you look at Africans and you look at their culture, they hyperbolic, right. you know what I mean? They rings in their nose. People look at that as, as, as tribal or a barbaric, but really, you know, this is their form of expression. Yeah, and, and my and my and my thing is this. I think my my message is really this that, you know, don't get me wrong. We all like looking good, smelling good, you know. We all like the little, little fly. However, and nothing is wrong with that, right? But when it becomes wrong to me, is when somebody feels like they value that more than they value themselves because they don't have knowledge of self, and we're way more valuable than anything that's external. So I always say get knowledge of self. So my whole message is, yeah, I like to look fly. Yeah, I like to do this, but I know that you value me being fly more than anything. So let me get your attention with it, but then let me feed you because I'm really trying to feed you so you can see yourself and understand that you don't have to have this. You don't have to be living like me. You don't have to be living like the rapper or like the millionaire and you still got the same value or even more when you know yourself, you know what I'm saying? I want to get us back to the roots of who the fuck we are without all this shit, you know what I'm saying? If we can really just cause this like this, on that level, we'll be on a high frequency, you know? It, the whole so, like, world would be different. So do you plan on doing like investments or going into real estate or anything like that? Yeah, are yeah. you already into that? Yeah, yeah, I want to... Um, I want. I got some things up my sleeve, and, and like I say, you know, I, I write stuff. I write certain things down. I'm not gonna say. I'm not gonna say I'm here, mm -hmm. but I got. I got some things up my sleeve that I want to do, like that's like. May, I want to have my own island one day, bro. My own island, build my own community. I, like it sounds far fetched, but some people say you dream too big. I say people don't dream enough. I know I can do anything. God said I got dominion over everything in the land, and the way that I think. I'm, I'm ready to manifest some greatness. Said, Think you grow rich. Whatever the mind believes, it can see. It can achieve. see. It can achieve. The part of the book when I was 19, 41 years ago. Mm. I, wrote, yes, I, I, I read it, you know, when I was a kid, and that's when I got into Dale Carnegie. Uh, you know, I got into, uh, you know, I named Dino and just whole host of books: Forty Eight Laws of Power, Sun Tzu's. Out of war, you know, and uh, so, and what you think about them Robert Green books, man? Like, well, you know, I am Robert Green, you know, that shit ain't nothing. If you're in the hood, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Hood, like, like, you know, I'm gonna say this real quick, and, and then I, you know, shout out Robert Green, bro. But, like, everybody always, I'll be like, you read books, and the first things they always tell me in prison, I read The Art of Seduction, I read The Art of War, I read The 48 Laws of Power, and like, all that shit does. It teaches you how to be deceptive and manipulative and, and but i already know all that shit. like that's like you you know how to be 